LIDAR. There was no doubt walking around CES this year that LIDAR is coming. You didn't have to consult a map to go and find these once obscure laser beam sensor providers. Several of the LIDAR companies had prime placement in the center of the main hall. Some of them were in booths that were 30 feet tall with these massive LED screens and sporting future versions of name brand cars with their technology built into a little bump in the roof. There was an autonomous indie race car. There was a dental robot. This camera attachment that takes product shots. Smart intersections that are watching what pedestrians are doing. And a bunch of automotive LiDAR vendors with their point clouds on display showing off their Nintendo Virtual Boy graphics of the crowd in real time. Some of these booth setup costs are no doubt into the millions of dollars too, which is a clear display that the ADAS and automation markets are heating up and getting ready for the ensuing sensor wars. And it's not just the new EV startups like the Lucid Airs and the Waymos of the industry that are getting involved. Toyota was there with the driverless taxi. Luminar was there showing off a 2024 Volvo with LiDAR integrated into a bump out in the body of the car. The Volkswagen ID Buzz has five sensors built in for autonomous driving. An Audi e-tron was on the floor. Honda and Sony are teaming up to release this Afila car. And all of these talking about using light detection and ranging to make their cars safer and more convenient for the drivers of the future. Mercedes had this insane booth to show off their Vision EQXX, another LiDAR enabled level three driving car. Level three means you still have to sit in the driver's seat and pay attention to the road, but you no longer have to touch the wheel every 12 seconds to keep the car driving by itself. The big players are piling in on this technology. Tesla's still betting against the use of it, but after seeing everything at CES, it's pretty clear that the world will be turning to laser beams for at least the near future. Even John Deere was there to talk about how they're using LiDAR to check crop heights. Waymo has been working on this technology out in the real world for years already, and they had their whole lineup parked outside going all the way back to this little Pixar looking car from 2017. Evidently, if you live over in Phoenix, you can hail a completely driverless cab right now. I might take a trip out there just to go take a ride in one, and they're only limited by the highway speeds. I honestly don't understand how that company alone is allowed to turn on their full self-driving capabilities. They also make a semi-truck that, according to the Waymo rep I was interviewing, is already doing loads out on the road, driving by itself. Yeah, you can see them in Texas um, and Arizona um, and some of them in California. So I-45 um, is the highway where where we're mostly testing them right now. If you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you know that I have one significant investment in one LiDAR company in particular, Microvision. And they were at CES with their test vehicle from the promo videos they had been putting out over the last year of testing with their Maven DR sensor. This sensor right here that I got really up close and personal with. I actually got to talk to Sumit, the CEO, and sit down in a private room with the CFO and another unnamed investor. Anubhav told me in no uncertain terms that they have been meeting nonstop in person with different OEMs all week. Week. He made it sound like they want to finish integrating the software from Obeo into the Microvision hardware, and they're going to have to wait for Microvision's acquisition of Obeo to finish before being allowed to officially integrate the two companies. But that there wasn't really anything in the way of that process finishing and should be done by Q1 of this year. He also made it sound like he was extremely confident that they would have actual customers in the first half of this year, and that their runway, even with buying Obeo, is totally set through the end of 2024, and that's without factoring in any sales that happened this year. Also, Anabob says, companies won't be going all in with their entire automotive lineup right away. And that's true for any LiDAR provider. They're gonna start with like one model of car, gather a ton of data and move on to round two. We're gonna start seeing sales basically now from the entire LiDAR market, but we won't start seeing exclusive contracts that go with the first round of it. There's gonna be a bit of a battle of attrition and especially with this dog shit market, what do they say? We're gonna see the cream separate from the whey or whatever. I also asked him if the company was still for sale. And he said, yes, Microvision will remain for sale. Really, any company is for sale kind of at any time for the right price. But that his vision is to become a juggernaut in the industry, my word, not his, and to sell to multiple automotive manufacturers for decades to come. The most likely source of a buyout, if there ever was one, would be one of the huge manufacturing companies that actually stamps out the sensors, like ZF Friedrichshafen. Friedrichshafen. Fried Friedrich Schaven? Friedrich Schaven? A $38 billion automotive manufacturing line that produces automotive parts and sensors and electronics worldwide. I also spent some time with the company that's teamed up with the media production for Microvision. They made those videos about the track testing and explained all the progress during the testing. And the man from those videos himself was on stage at CES giving multiple presentations a day about their value proposition and strengths when compared to the competitors. And, and quite frankly, there are a lot of other LiDAR sensors out there, but because they're big and bulky, they will not enable these low profile uh, types of deployments. The second thing that they're looking for are high resolution point clouds. Now, high resolution is important because it allows the vehicle safety system. If I understood it correctly, he's actually one of the co-owners of that media company. It's pretty cool. 
a really nice guy. The other half was there too. She's a really nice lady. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Heidi. It's funny when the CEO of a sensor company and the star of their marketing videos feel like celebrities, but I've spent so much time researching these folks that that's just the reality for me. And it was so much fun to actually speak to them in person. I didn't necessarily learn anything new at the conference. There was no dropping bombs, but my confidence that LiDAR is going mainstream is at an all-time high. And I know it's not always the best technical specs that win these sort of races, but I also know that price is one of the strongest drivers. And Microvision, while still maintaining the highest refresh rate with the densest point cloud in one of the smallest form factors, is also one of the most affordable options at scale. Anyway, the race is on. That's LiDAR from CES. The question is, what are the attributes that OEMs are looking for in choosing the technology partners that will enable this next generation of advanced driver safety? Well, we've spoken to a number of these OEMs and have boiled this down to four key elements. The first are low profile sensors with low power requirements. Now the reason that slim low profile sensors are important is because they will enable OEMs more flexibility in terms of where and how they will allow OEMs to deploy these sensors on their vehicles, ultimately give them uh, more options and more unconventional options beyond just the grill or behind the windshield, allowing them to integrate these sensors, say, into the roof line of the vehicle without an obtrusive bump. And, and quite frankly, there are a lot of other LiDAR sensors out there, but because they're big and bulky, they will not enable these low profile uh, types of deployments. Okay, the second thing that they're looking for are high resolution point clouds. Now, high resolution is important because it allows the vehicle safety system to see uh, objects on the road that could be impediments or could present danger. It also allows the vehicle to see the surface and condition of the road itself. Scalability, this is something that we've heard a lot from OEMs as being really important. Known hardware and known costs. So a known supply chain rather and known costs. And the fourth thing is object level perception software. So because OEMs are looking to make this, this investment efficient and they're looking to get to market quickly with this new differentiation, they're gonna need to look at new approaches like uh, object level perception running on custom ASIC. We boil our ability to compete and win down to three key factors. The first is superior technology. When it comes to technology, nobody else has the kind of capabilities that Microvision does to deliver LiDAR-enabled ADAS at highway speeds. We boil our technology down to, to two fundamental aspects. There is the LiDAR hardware and perception software. Now, Maven, our uh, industry-leading uh, LiDAR hardware, uh, is a dynamic range sensor. And what that means is that we combine three fields of view into one ultra-high resolution point cloud. As I start this video, you'll see that we isolate the short, medium, and long range elements uh, of the point cloud so that we can accentuate this dynamic range and how they are stitched together into one ultra high resolution point cloud. As we go to the second clip of point cloud that's captured from Germany last year, you'll see that we're able to detect objects at the side of the road. Things like a cyclist here, you can see them pedaling, it's that detail. Or a motorcyclist coming up in the opposing lane. So we've got incredible resolution and low latency. That last little segment showed that you can see road markings in our point cloud as well. So what I wanna highlight here is that while there are a lot of LiDAR companies that are producing point cloud videos, many of them are using data from other sensors like radar or camera to fill in gaps in their LiDAR. All of the videos that you see from Microvision here today, online, in the booth, they are 100% pure, they are 100% LiDAR. This next clip here shows you how we're able to detect and track multiple objects simultaneously. This is really important, especially at highway speeds, and many other LiDAR solutions struggle with uh, losing or confusing objects as they cut in front of each other. The density and resolution of our point cloud, it truly is second to none. We have object level perception, so that means that we're able to detect and track objects and this also is very important when we think about delivering this next generation of advanced safety capabilities around the world. We are developing a custom ASIC. Now this custom designed ASIC will allow us to optimize for speed, for cost, and also for seamless integration into any OEM architecture. 
So this is a really important part of our strategy in terms of making this technology available in a scalable and cost-effective way. Let's touch on our OEM focus. Now this is a really important part of our strategy. Because we are focused on and partnering with OEMs, we're going to enable them to bring this technology to market faster, in a more scalable way, and with a lower cost structure. We've designed our solution so that it's easy to deploy and integrate. It means that the uh, sensor takes up less space and also contributes less weight. But beyond that, it's also important to note that our solution requires fewer overall sensors. And this is important because it lowers the total cost and makes a LiDAR-enabled ADAS solution total cost of ownership that's lower uh, than other solutions that exist today. We have a solution that uses known materials to OEM. So everything that we, uh, that we use in our solution is already known to OEM supply chains. And this means that there are no supply chain challenges. And again, this is really important because it makes our solution scalable, sourceable, and supports a lower cost structure. So the final thing I'll touch on really quickly is our proven track record for bringing technology to market. There are a lot of startups in the LiDAR space, but Microvision has been commercializing technology for 20 years. We already deliver technologies to some of the largest global tech companies like Sony, Microsoft, and Sharp, as well as developing core technology for the US military with the Department of Defense. As we're on the topic of delivering on commitments, 2022 was a pivotal year for Microvision. You'll see that throughout the year, we hit all of the commitments and milestones that we committed to, from uh, conducting numerous rounds of track testing um, with, uh, with our test vehicle, to uh, automating our sample line, achieving class one compliance, and that set us up to begin shipping samples to customers in the fall of 2022. In December, we announced our intention to acquire IBO Solutions, which is a LiDAR company out of Germany. And they have some incredible technology and intellectual property and a team that will allow us to accelerate our go-to-market strategy and bring our incredible solution to market even more quickly. We're exactly where we want to be going into 2023. We've got the unmatched hardware and software to deliver this next generation of advanced safety features at highway speeds. We've got the OEM-focused strategy that allows OEMs to tailor our product to their specific program requirements um, in a cost-effective way that presents no challenge uh, to their supply chain. So while everyone else is talking about the future of LiDAR, Microvision is ready now. We are ready to partner with OEMs and bring this technology to market so that we can make driver safety uh, more accessible to everyone.